Hey guys, Drift Sour here. Welcome to Woodycraft Prison In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about a popular prison question. When should I woodcut and when should I mine? There are many theories out there. Some people say you should always mine. Some people say you should mine after the Tango Ward. Some people just don't know. But this is all subjective speculation. And on this channel, we like to run scientific tests and base our advice on statistics as accurate as we can make them. I've gone through all the wards and thoroughly tested every single one. And I'll now briefly go through and describe my testing method, share the results, and what the results mean. First I'll give some context on how I ran my tests, because it's easy to throw stats and numbers in your face and tell you this is better, but it's important for everyone to know what they mean, otherwise they're pretty useless. So I went to every ward, waited for the mine to reset, copied a chunk of that mine, pasted it out of everyone's way, and stacked it three times. I didn't want any other players possibly interfering with the data. I then set up a five minute timer and gathered as much as I possibly could from the mine in five minutes using kingpin tools that is efficiency 2 and with perfectly even MCMMO levels, level 2000 in mining and level 1000 in woodcutting so that I will get double drops in both mines without fail. I also didn't just drill back and forth, I wanted to simulate how a real player would go for blocks as best I could. To compensate for this player inaccuracy, I performed the test three times on each mine type, then averaged and rounded the results. Of course, I do realize there are many factors for which I could not account, but it doesn't really invalidate the data that I set out for, and I'll discuss that a bit later. I've now thrown up a spreadsheet of crazy numbers and colors on your screen, and I won't read it all out, I know you can read and understand for yourself, but I will briefly explain what some of these results mean. This section here is the data that I was after, you can see that I determined you can earn more money per time by woodcutting in Zulu, Whiskey, Tango, and Delta. So, not too far off what some people speculated, and in fact I remember one man in one of my live streams commented that he preferred woodcutting up to Sierra, then went back to it only in Delta. With the exception of X-Ray, he was quite accurate, so I found that quite impressive. The thing is, woodcutting is only superior in 4 to 12 wards, so a third of the time, and if you look at how much woodcutting is better in these wards, it often isn't much at all. All of these where woodcutting prevailed, are very close, like 0 0.05, 0 0.06, with the exception of whiskey, but this is actually a special case, because mining is so good in x-ray that it's actually better than mining in whiskey, and if you compare whiskey woodcutting to the x-ray mining instead of to the whiskey mining, it makes woodcutting only about 1.13 times better than mining. So woodcutting is actually never much of an advantage in any ward. And keep in mind, this is with max MCMMO, 100% double drop chance. So, some would argue that it really just isn't worth training your woodcutting skill at all. Maybe. And I'll get to that. After gathering this data, I had a bit more fun down here where I extrapolated a bit and answered some other questions, such as how long does it take to escape each ward, just by dividing the money it takes to escape by the money per hour, and I found that with the minor exception of Echo and Bravo, the wards follow a logical progression of difficulty. Some people believe that that Zulu grind is impossible, but it actually only takes somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour and a half, just depending on where you are with your MCMMO double drops. Anyway, I then added them up out of curiosity to find the theoretical minimum time it would take you to prestige if you did nothing but mine in the best mines and slash sell hand with Kingman tools and max MCMMO. Of course, this does not factor in drugs, among countless other things, and is really a number that means absolutely nothing, but it was fun to calculate. Now let me talk about where this test falls down, and how some of this data could be invalidated. Overall, I think these numbers are quite helpful, and they do prove some things, they are not complete garbage by any means, but these values themselves will not be very accurate in representing what you will actually earn. I'm going to be switching away from this spreadsheet back to Minecraft footage, but don't worry if you want to stare at it longer without keeping this video open and paused, there is a link to this Google spreadsheet that I created which can be found in the description. So what does this test not account for? Well, many many things. The biggest thing would be the MCMMO abilities, Tree Feller and Super Breaker. I didn't use these once in testing because setting up a floating block of logs so that I can use Tree Feller is very subjective to player inconsistency, and there's a whole new block of testing I would have to do to determine what the most efficient way is to use Tree Feller. 
so I kept them both out of this, but when you factor those in, it could have a large effect on the results. For example, when you compare Tree Feller versus Super Breaker as abilities in the Alpha Ward, Tree Feller has the clear advantage in my eyes. If you set up a large Tree Feller block in Alpha and use it to gather tons of Acacia Logs, it may suddenly become competitive with mining. The Super Breaker ability is no longer very useful in Alpha because the fortune effect it has when breaking ores no longer applies to the blocks. In a ward like Echo on the other hand, the abilities may be somewhat similar in usefulness, and going back to a low ward like Zulu, it may be near impossible to use Tree Feller well without other people getting in your way and messing with your setup, while Super Breaker is perfectly useful. Another big thing that this test leaves out is the fact that only certain people can run slash sell hand, and this test assumes this when calculating overall efficiency. While I don't think this has a huge impact overall in logs versus mining, because without this command you will have to manually sell the things from both mines, I imagine woodcutting would become even worse in later wards, and become better in the first few because for example in alpha it would be easier to sell the emerald and diamond blocks manually and dispose of the cobblestone instead of selling stacks upon stacks of acacia logs frequently which of course cuts down on the time that you can be mining another couple of big influencing factors are the best tools the best pick and the best axe the best pick has a fortune effect which gives a big advantage in wards up until echo but becomes less useful after that, while the best axe will be just as useful in the Delta to Alpha wards as it was before. It may be more beneficial to be tearing through the Acacia Logs with the best axe than it would be to break Emerald and Diamond Blocks slightly faster with the best pick. Finally, there's the aspect of smelting the Gold and Iron Ores in the first four wards up to Sierra. It would be very difficult to answer the question of it being efficient or not to smelt the ores, because while you do earn double for selling an ingot as opposed to selling an ore, it obviously takes you time away from the mine to smelt them, and people could be using their cell or they may have purchased furnaces for their plot, so there's no real way to test smelting reliably when I don't know how many furnaces to which the average player has access. And even if I knew that, the data wouldn't be very helpful. I would have to try to smelt the ores that I gathered in the last minute of the five minutes or something like that, and with the 5 minute window, that no longer properly reflects how someone would save up their ores in their e-chest and smelt them later, so it would be much more useful and comparable to run the test the way I did, where I simply sold the ores and the ingots that were automatically smelted with MZMO, along with everything else to make a comparison between the mines. There are countless other things that influence these results in small and large ways, but on the whole, this data is very legitimate and useful in deciding where you should mine in each ward. My personal advice is that you should generally focus on mining, but if you have some friends together, it's quite fun to work together to try to set up massive tree felling blocks, and it could be more profitable in the end if you work together. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode of Prison In-Depth that was on the best drugs to grow and the best ways in which to grow them, you can click that box on the left, but it doesn't actually exist as this is a joke. And if you'd like to check out the next episode that's going to be on shanks, using them and avoiding them, you can click that box on the right, but nothing's going to happen because that video also does not and will not exist. If you know who Driftor is, then you've surely noticed that this video is a carbon copy of his in-depth series. I just want to make it perfectly clear that I, one, have a lot of respect for the man and what he does on YouTube, and that I am in no way taking shots at him or mocking his style in a negative way, and two, I'm not copying his style or in-depth branding in a feeble attempt to leech off of his success. I was going to make this video to communicate the information that I did regardless, and I found it funny how similar it was to an in-depth video and decided to take it one step further as a joke. I tried to mimic an in-depth video in a comical way without engineering it in a way to pull a raw instinct, which is why I recreated thumbnails that look like his for the outro here, but I didn't actually copy his thumbnail for the video. I'm certainly not making this into a series, or if I did, I would no longer imitate the style of someone else. It would be in my own. But thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drift Sour out.